I welcome. Hey everybody, I'm Katrina. Uh, Hi. I'm Katrina from the Cat We Trust and a bunch of other uh, places. Uh, and this is my panel behind the magic women of color in wrestling. Um, women, not only women wrestlers, but also the women kind of behind the scenes, the ring announcers, the commentators, the interviewers, and all that stuff. And so, let's get this started. We're going to start with a nice intro of uh, where you guys work from and how long we've been doing this. Hi, everybody. Hello. <laughs> so, my name is Karen. Oh, no, no. Shit. Also known as Karen Bandit when I'm in the ring. Five years ago, under Johnny Rods, um, and I made my professional debut in 2019. And since then, I've done a lot of work in New England, New York, Midwest. Started branching out down south. A few championships here and there. You know, stand up, can't stand up there. Making myself a little household name, building up the YouTube brand.
We love you! Trust 
um, the things that I have to say and to trust that those are important and to put those out in that space and create more positive, a more positive atmosphere for it. So that's how I got started. So I actually stumbled upon WWE on the Spanish channel. I don't speak Spanish, so. <laughs> um, I actually saw John Cena and I was like, oh, what is this? And just started watching. I think I watched for a couple weeks and then I realized it was on the USA Network and I started watching it in English. But um, I really just fell in love with the storylines and you know, seeing the women in the ring as well, that was huge for me. Um, I actually started the podcast when I was still in college. It was me and one of my friends. Um, I had no idea she liked wrestling until I went on Twitter one day and saw she was talking about Monday Night Raw. And I asked her, I said, you like wrestling? And she's like, oh yeah, my sister and I watch it. And I was like, oh, okay, me too. So we would talk about it here and there. And then she was actually the one that came up with the idea of hosting a podcast. And this was 2019, 2018 actually. And Podcasts were just starting to boom. So you had like Caller Daddy on Marstool that had just came out. So I took a look in the wrestling sphere of podcasting and I realized there weren't a lot of women talking about professional wrestling. Um, and that really stood out to me. Um, those wrestling girls, I think they had just started, but you know, there weren't a lot of women talking about wrestling. So that was one of my motivations to really start the podcast. And I knew I wanted to talk about something more than just wrestling. And my friend, she loves beer. I'm not a beer drinker, sorry if you like beer. I don't, I don't like it, but I love wine. So Woo! I actually came up with the name Wrestling Wine Down, Wine Down based off of SmackDown. She took the SmackDown and put wine in there, and the rest is history. Um, my co-host stepped away, she moved to Seattle, and she's been doing her own podcast. But, you know, it's been amazing to say this is my baby and, you know, really be able to just do everything and really make sure it's what I imagined and what I envisioned it when I, you know, was still in college looking to start a podcast. Sometimes I can. Sometimes. And, um, 
And then we like literally just me trying to get more comfortable on camera. I hated being on camera. I hated talking in front of people. Uh, and so working with everybody and working with the wrestlers who've been kind. They didn't give it when they're like talking all types of trash. I'm like, it's not like I go through it. We're fine, we're cool. And so yeah, that's kind of what it was to me. I never would have thought I'd be working in like with wrestlers, with like uh, commentators or any of that. I would have never thought in 2020. But here I am. <laughs> Go Storm! So, uh, we all know women in general in um, most areas of the world, we have to convert double. And it's a lot even more when we're women of color. That triple for sometimes probably for the times of effort we have to get. And so, for you, how has it been working as a woman of color in this industry and in, in the job that you do? <laughs> Ah. <laughs> ah. Tell the truth, champ. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, it's been rewarding and equally good, huh? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> you can have a lot of people. You can have money to start something, but that doesn't mean you have the range and the creativity. And it's difficult when people want to follow in the footsteps of what's been done before. But we're in 2022. Things have changed, culture is moving forward, and sometimes things don't want to move forward with it. Um, and that um, impacts us. Like, women already are impacted by that. Like, some of the storylines I see are so empty. It's like, I know you don't know what to do. <laughs> what the hell do you do? Like, what you like, fighting over a lipstick? Like, come on. <laughs> but, and then when you add the black girl magic in the mix, it's just like, we just don't know what to do with it. It's too much. And that just comes down to having more women and women of color in those positions. But, you know, that's a whole other thing. That's, you know, more of your forte. <laughs> 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 yeah, unfortunately. Um, but, um, <laughs> so, my time has been nothing but fun. That is also fun and rewarding. But, of course, there's peaks and valleys, and unfortunately, within wrestling, the valleys are very steep. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been fortunate to be surrounded by so many people that done nothing but either put the best into me or brought the best out of me. And I was fortunate enough to have a network of people that really either care about me or care about my cause, which is black women in wrestling because unfortunately that is that is the one that's really in the shadows. And I enjoy fighting for it every moment. It's beautiful. Well for me, I can say like I said earlier, um, as a black woman in wrestling I feel like I've joined a sisterhood, you know, full of powerful women, not even just athletes, but also the few women who do work behind the scenes in wrestling and also are the storytellers. Um, to be a part of that sisterhood as a collective means the world to me because there are some times where I feel like I am just flapping in the wind, like, what am I doing? But then, then, but then they'll catch me and be like, it's okay, like, this is this, and it's like, or just tell me, tell me to chill out. And that everything's gonna be okay, and I feel okay with that. And that's wonderful to be a part of in every sense of the word. Um, in terms of my valleys that I have faced, um, it's mainly just been internet trolls. Oh, mm -hmm. Internet trolls who kind of like come on there and when you're standing up for something that you know you believe in as a black woman, um, and you're standing up for someone that you, that you really see it for, and then all of a sudden, they'll come on and say stuff negative like, oh, well, you shouldn't be saying that, or, you know, you shouldn't say this, or, you know, keep it to yourself, or your show's never gonna be successful if you're doing stuff like this, or saying stuff like this, or you suck as a commentator. And it's just like, you're saying all of this, but you're reacting to me being out in front, yes. and, you're, and you're behind. So, um, <laughs> so what I try to do most of the time is to just you know know who I am and just sort of embrace who I am 
and love myself and always remind myself that my voice does matter. And even to, and to the people who it's not for, and it's just not for you, but at the end of the day, I have a purpose and I'm going to do it. Regardless of how it makes me feel, so that's how that's how it is. Um, my experience, I think, has been very unique because I first started out as you know it was me and my friend, and then going down to just me being um, the face of wrestling wind down. It, it's been a little bit of an adjustment, but I'm very thankful that. You know, I've been able to cultivate friendships within this community and working relationships with people where, you know, they're supportive, they share my stuff. It's been, you know, amazing to just meet all of these individuals. You know, I meet people when I go to events, I've met people today, and it, you know, it's just amazing to finally put a face to someone that you see on the internet that has supported you and stuff like that. Um, but, I, I mean, I can't, I, I think this, experience has given me a lot because, you know, I took the stuff that I learned in school. I went to school for journalism and media studies. I was able to, you know, have a radio show when I was in college about hip-hop and R&B, and I was able to translate those skills into a wrestling podcast, and it's just crazy to me that I've been able to, you know, take those skills that I learned four or five years ago and now use it for something that I'm so passionate about. this too long so I've mostly seen the peaks. Okay now the valleys, if anyone has me on Twitter you know I have a different opinion on things. Like I don't have the opinion that everyone's looking for. So I do deal with people who want to go back and forth as Stephanie said, the trolls. That's my valley is dealing with those people. But other than that, you know, I've enjoyed it so far. I'm just meeting like minded people who are amazing and just so kind and more of this. So yeah, that's I'll keep it short and sweet for that. But yeah, I've had some of these. For me, it's it's most of the time it's okay. I, I'm I've gotten very fortunate again to work with people who's been nothing but kind, uh, and who's like if I needed help with something or to kind of loosen up or get so nervous when I'm really nervous, everybody's been really nice about that. I think my biggest issues has also been people online because they do too much. <laughs> like, I've had some really crazy things said to me or getting pieces that I didn't ask for and I'm like, I don't care. I don't care about your, I truly don't care. Like, I can be connected, so. <laughs> uh, but I can't be like, okay, wrestling moment of hours. But what is the favorite moment you guys have doing your job? Ooh, that's... Yes. I had a chance. Come on. I mean, it's... I could sit here and talk about this all day, but I've been really blessed in a lot of ways. Um, but recently, like the past Black Girl Magic 2 show for me was a highlight. Um, <laughs> for a number of reasons, and after the pandemic, it has been maybe like two years since I wrestled in New York. And um, I was doing in the main event with um, Trisha Dora, who is <laughs> an amazing, amazing wrestler. And um, to top that off as well, that was the first time my father actually got to see me wrestle since I started. So Dope. that really made it, especially since I'm doing it. Well. I was able to get all of them sponsored. I was able to 
give them everything they were sponsored. Closer. They don't get that part. I was able to give them every single dollar that was sponsored for them to them. A lot of those women are still on the independent promotion. A lot of times, you don't get paid what you ask for. So I gave them more. I gave them their rate. I gave them everything they were sponsored. And if I feel they wasn't a sponsor enough, I gave them more money. That doesn't happen within women wrestling within the Indies, and especially for women of color. So for me to be the one to network across and do that, that that's priceless. I mean, I can also brag and say, along with getting every woman sponsored, the show was completely paid for. Flag. Sponsorships. Flag. So, so when PBS say this won't happen with people like you, Black Girl Magic can say it. Flex. That also doesn't happen in independent wrestling. That also especially doesn't happen when the show is about people of color. So that's my moment. And after it may be this one, but right now that's my moment. And I'm, I'm so proud of that. Let's go back to three. More to three. Holla, holla, holla. And the Undertaker. Just, see, I didn't know being able to interview him because it means a lot. Because not only did I spend my life, you know, watching him, but what a lot of people don't know is he was born in Birmingham, Alabama, just like me. And just to be able, and just the fact that he was even watching me, he actually saw the content I was making when I was starting small. And he was being supportive on Instagram. I was like, okay, well, since you want to be supportive, let me try and ask you if that's okay. And, you know, sometimes you work back and forth, you got to figure out, you know, how stuff can work with wrestlers at a certain time. And he said, you know, he got back to me and called me. He was like, yeah. And I was like, okay, cool. And when we interviewed each other, I was still trying to figure out Zoom. Like, I was still trying to figure out streaming and how everything worked. But we figured it out, and it's on my YouTube, and I love it. And I just consider him like a really great hero because from my hometown, it's like it's wrestling isn't it's like a very like not everybody's into it, you know, in terms of you know where I'm from in Birmingham. It's like we're a historic wrestling city, but as far as like the current component of it, we're still trying to figure all of that out, even though we do have indie shows. So just knowing that in the past, you know, you have this person who's done everything from refereeing to all kinds of different things, general managing, managing, like he's done it all. And so the fact that he took the time to come on my show, you know, because we're both Birmingham people meant a lot. So that's my moment in podcasting. My moment in commentating was when I got to commentate Karen Bam Bam and Trish Dory, Black Romantic too. Yeah! What a night, what a night. <laughs> with her time and just learning about 
her career, and she's so candid whenever she talks to people. It just meant so much to interview her. Um, another moment that meant a lot is kind of on our merch side of things. So Wrestling Wind Down does sell merch. Um, I was able to give Wardlow a 1-800 War Daddy shirt at AEW Fan Fest. That was pretty good. <laughs> Um, and then I had the opportunity to actually design. It was my first shirt design for a wrestler, um, for Jake something recently. Um, Jake is popular among the girlies on Twitter, and, you know, the girlies love the shirt. Um, and some pro wrestling season, it just meant a lot that, you know, he was able to, um, you know, he liked the design enough to put it on his store. So um, those are some of the top moments that I've had so far. my best amazing moment. It's not really one specific thing. I think it's just working with my amazing co-host, uh, Bad Guy Jack. Right That's now. me! Yeah. Yeah. That's me! Every single time that we have worked together, such an amazing experience. He's always been so supportive of me and just everything that we're trying to build with Unpopular Review. So I'm gonna say that is, you know, my moment. It's just those moments when we're doing, you know, the reviews for NXT and we're going crazy. It's very crazy. She's um, but yeah, she's that's the best. <laughs> yeah, that, that's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs>
for me, that's the most meaningful thing. Because I just all this black girl magic and that's chocolate goodness, you know. Ah. <laughs> Having 
black women in professional wrestling and sports in general is absolutely necessary because we bring so much to the table. We deserve a seat at the table. Um, but, you know, seeing the reaction of, you know, people online, you know, based on me being able to talk to Roman and Paul Heyman, it just, it meant so much to me because, you know, I get support all the time. It means so much because, you know, like Stephanie said, like, when I started my podcast, I knew my mom and my grandma were going to listen to it, but, like, I didn't know if anyone else was. So the fact that, you know, I've been able to, you know, have people that love to listen to the show and tweet me and stuff like that means so much. And, you know, that moment being at that press conference was really the moment that just made me be like, okay, wow, this is, this is serious. Like, I'm, I'm deep. I'm in deep now. Um, but, yeah, definitely agree with the, with the women's on this panel. I, I really can't explain what it means to be a woman of color within the sphere of professional wrestling when it comes to podcasting. Uh, so for me, it's it, kind of the same thing. I really couldn't give you an exact word or exact phrase, but for me, and I think Stephanie brought it up, seeing Sasha and Bianca, I didn't even realize I was gonna be that emotional about it until I saw the match. And now I'm crying. And I'm like, why are you crying? <laughs> and it's because it's crazy how long it took for us to get to this point. And it's crazy how long it took for it to be so many of us at this point. And just, it makes me so happy to be a part of it and to be growing into this. And being a part of the whole more women of color in this. I'm a part of that. That's crazy, huh? <laughs> um, and I just, it just makes me so happy to just see us growing. And as I said, we are no longer needles in a haystack. We are the hay. Hey. So, Love hey. that. Love that. <laughs> Love that. Or when I saw 
son's friend said, I saw you on Fight TV, and I'm like, why are you watching this? <laughs> but um, it, that was like, crap. People like actually see that I'm do, trying to do something. And so I feel like that, I don't know if I could ever explain like how that feels. But it's amazing. I, I feel like I just can't wait to see like, we all do next. I feel like we all can just get into new cool things. The Roman Reigns interview says, I was like,
Because a lot of the women that's on television right now is better than a lot of the men in the hundred. Champ is wonderful. Champ is wonderful. And you better be on an October list. Um, as for myself, my my deals with Black Girl Magic, I, I, I think I think I want to get a license. Hell yeah. I think I think I want to be able to do Black Girl Magic with the Black Girls license. Mm -hmm. So I think I think that might be my next step within the, the wrestling facility. Of course, there's always going to be talk to champions, whether it's a show, a group, or spaces, or a live, or whatever we decide to do. It's always going to be that, and I'm always going to be me on Twitter. So that's a fighting. You. I'm not hard. Yeah. <laughs> well, for me, what I want in terms of women of color, um, or women as a whole, is more women of color, <coughs> women as a whole, to have more to say in the intellectual space. And what I mean by that is, just this week, you know, they did WWE, no shades to them, um, but they did announce, because I do love, you know, all, all their announcers, it's just like, they announced, you know, everyone that's going to be on their commentary team. And they're all men. And I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired of it because I feel like it's 2022. We're out here doing the work. I mean, and even though people have their different interests of what they do um, or what or certain things that they can or cannot do, it's women are here like we have the intellectual space we know the move sets we know finishing moves weight classes all of the above and if we know all of this then how come you're not sitting us at the table to talk about it with the michael Bowl or with the corey grace as if we can't you know name this stuff like it's tiring it's really tiring like if women can have long-standing careers in wrestling and in the ring then we should be able to add our two cents intellectually. And there's nothing wrong with women being, you know, ring announcers and also being interviewers and stuff like that. I mean, that's great and that does take intellect. That takes a lot of great intellect to do and you have to know what questions to ask when and all of the above. But we are more. We can write stories. We can do all of these different things. Put us back there and let us work and write these stories that make sense for women and women of color as well. And put us on the forefront and let us do these jobs because we can. Yeah. I definitely agree with her. I actually said that the other day on Twitter that why are there no women of color on the commentary team? I think, you know, when Renee Paquette was the first woman announced to be the first commentator in WWE history. It was a huge deal, but a black woman could do it too. And I think that's what we need. We need representation. It's great to have it in the ring. It's great to have it in backstage interviewers. It's great to have it in writers and et cetera. But we want to see these women talking about wrestling, right? Like you said, right next to Corey Graves, right next to an experienced Michael Cole. Maybe not. Uh, maybe Michael and girl, but maybe <laughs> um, but that's definitely something that I want to see um, moving forward with Wrestling Lion Down. Um, my goals are to um, launch my rebrand coming up soon. Um, when I first started the podcast, like I mentioned, it was me and my friend in college. And, you know, the brand has really transitioned to being just me hosting along, you know, along with uh, co-hosts and guests and stuff like that. So really rebranding to showcase, you know, here I am, here's the brand, and, you know, just moving forward, I think, you know, it's just been really incredible working with different individuals, and I'm really excited to just keep branching out and, you know, broadening my horizons, whether it's, you know, interviewing more wrestlers or interviewing um, different people in the business. So I'm just really looking forward to the future of Wrestling Line Down. <coughs> I want to do. Like, 
you know, I want to see women of color, of course, like color commentary, I don't know, maybe me, I don't know, like, um, but that's what I want to work towards, because I feel like the minute I started on this journey, you know, I watch wrestling, I love wrestling, of course, but once I said, okay, now I want to talk about it, I want to get into that business, everything just started moving, which told me, okay, so this is where I was supposed to be all along, because I was at a standstill before I stepped into my power, um, and so just, this, it feels right, and I want to see more women that look like me doing things that I also want to do. So for me, I want to do more, you know, interviewing or, you know, color commentary. I feel like that would be fun, you know? <laughs> so that's what I want to get into, and I just want to see my people win. I want to see my people do more because I know that we are capable of it and more. So. Go viral. I think I think calling them unprofessional was unprofessional. 
Ah. So that people leave their jobs if their jobs no longer fit them or serve them. And that is their priority. Um, if they don't give a damn about that contract, why are we calling them a professional? Uh, pretty much, I guess, well, everybody can say Triple H is probably going to bring Sasha back. We, we, we don't know about Naomi because, you know, they never do <coughs> Naomi up. Let's pray to the Lord that they bring them back as a unit because um, they don't have a problem. Nice way to say Anybody else want to say something quicker? Yeah. I just want to say the red carpets and the new, uh, the fashion we have. Yes. <laughs> yes. The photo shoots, the businesses, because regardless of what happens, you always going to have the exit plan, and they're going to win regardless of whether she was the E or not. So, <laughs> good for them. Uh -huh. um, what I would just like to say to this situation is it breaks my heart that that was what had to happen um, with them having to walk away, but what I will say is this though, like, they're showing what their worth is now without him. Mm -hmm. And honestly, they can either, I mean, honestly, definitely he was wrong for calling them unprofessional, but I would have handled it by just trying to listen to them and what they had to say, first of all, and how they felt. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just that simple, just open your mind and open your heart and listen to them, but if you don't, and if they had an atmosphere where people didn't want to listen to them, then they have every right to not come back. Of course, it will break my heart as a fan. But at the same time, they have to do what's best for them as human beings. So it's clear that they will thrive without it. It's abundantly clear. They're stars. They're beautiful. They got it. But if they do come back, I'm just hoping that the atmosphere is different for their, for their ideas to be listened to and so they won't be deemed unprofessional when you have like five people who left things and they haven't been called unprofessional not once. Um, so as far as like televised and extreme wrestling, what do you feel has been the most, I guess, intelligent or progressive like woman storyline in like the last ten years or so? <laughs> Was there one? <laughs> Was I don't. I honestly don't think they have one. That's my three seven. You still get um they go to name that kid or she smacked my soda on the floor. Or she likes my guy. So we still get ones like this. And until those stop, no one's really progressive. Oh, wait, sorry. And progressive isn't putting them against the man. How y'all doing? Uh, Ricky Mark, reporter for Corners of Commentary. So, uh, as a fellow podcaster and a father, it's important for my daughter to see the representation, which is why I'm at this match. I'm at you, Mr. Yeah, listen, man. Anytime. Yeah, I'm at you. Um, and the main event. So, um, but how important is it, is it to you to see younger women of color, girls of color, Watching either talent or you guys move each other. I'm gonna take it first. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's, it's again, my daughter's being able to see Sasha and Bianca was a lot quicker than I got to see. You know, Jasmine win the hardcore championship, but she wasn't respected as like a woman wrestling, though she could really go with the men. She could fight men, and she literally had all these belts in martial arts and all this stuff, but it was never appreciated. Uh, and so I think just seeing somebody like Yaka or Sasha or Naomi or even Kate, you know, and, you know, put in a way that it's not, like, ghetto. And then, yeah, you already know what I say, like, again, this really, really weird story. So I guess it's good, to, it's good to see that. It's good to hear, like, people say, oh, this is so cool you're doing this, and it's genuinely, like, happy, and it's not. And so I think I think I, I'm glad we're going the right way. I, we still have so much further to go, uh, but I think it's I think we're at a better place for younger girls to see it. I see all the Bianca Belair fans all the time. The little girls with the long braid and they swing it, and it it's it so nice to see that. So nice to see that. So. Yes, this is very <coughs> cool because. 
there's so much more out there, and I do want to express as well, as an independent wrestler, it's not just TV as well. There's a whole like treasure trove of content on my like, title match, IWTV, YouTube, of all of us out here doing our thing. So even if you're not feeling what's on TV, you can still please support you know, independent wrestling, and especially Black Girl Magic 3. For those of you that have young nieces, daughters, and such and such as well, Karen's in the name of them, Black Girl Magic 3 as well. So it's official. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, he said it was official. Ah. <laughs> yeah. We do have to end. We are a little over time. Uh, but again, thank you guys. Oh, sorry, guys. My name is Mo. Can you use the podcast? Um, we do have to wrap up. Uh, we have the time a bit. But thank you all. This is like seeing you guys here insane. I'm just like freaking out up here when we first got here. It's like you guys came to see us speak. And so thank you. All so much uh, for coming in. Uh, again, ladies, thank you. Stephanie and Lil, especially you guys came in from Vegas and Elevate with a conference in New York. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. 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 Y